Everything is very wet today. Very wet. We've had a lot of rain overnight and a lot of rain yesterday evening. Um, it rained Saturday. Uh, it rained over the weekend. So yeah, not much happening in the garden today. So I thought I'd have a rain day in the house today and in my workshop. So I've been having a rummage through my fabric and uh, my sewing patterns. So I think we'll have a look at that today. Because I've got some ideas for some fabric that I was given. Well, should we check the temperature on the fork and see what the fork says today? Let's have a look. It's actually saying it's 15 degrees. 14 degrees. Doesn't feel like it. I think Mr. Fork might be wrong. If I put it out of the gap, out, out of the nail, and I'll leave it on the table and see what temperature we get in a few minutes. 14 degrees, that's quite cold. Cold in my book, anyway. So I'm just going to get my breakfast and then get on with my day. I have to go down to the shop. Lots of leaves turn into autumn. There's lots of leaves turn into autumn. My apple tree is losing its leaves. <laughs> and my pears, my peat, my plum trees, they're losing their leaves too. But my rose has got some new buds on. Oh. My rose, my strawberry fields rose, has got some new buds on. So hopefully if we get some sun that will open up nicely before the end of the season. Well I think my roses are starting to finish now. So That border there has been really, really pretty. Still very pretty, it's got quite a bit of colour in it still. But I've got no shoes on so I can't go over. I had to peg my washing out on my era because uh, I can't get it dry. I won't be going for a run because uh, it's far too wet. Right, I'm going in. It's cold out here, I might put the fire on. I'm in the sitting room, there's the garden, and I've been having a look through some of my clothes and as you know, I've been trying to lose weight for ages and uh, I really like this top and I was given this top. Now this is a vintage top made locally and uh, I'd like to make it into a size that fits me. It looks really easy to copy. It's just a straightforward body. There's the body. It's just a straightforward body, square-ish. Um, then squarish sleeves and a square neck. Now I don't think I'll do the neck like this, I'm not sure yet. I cut the fabric out for it, but I'm not sure. It's a lovely drill cotton. Um, it's probably from the 1970s, looking at the style, looking at how boxy it is. It looks like it's been made like an artist's smock. It's got pockets in it as well. It's got three lovely pockets in it. So yeah, I'd like to copy that. I think it'd be great for around here for working in, in the winter, in the garden. Um, if I can make it in a thick fabric, I won't need to worry about keeping warm. I have got some denim, but uh, yeah, someone's had a go of doing a French seam. And I'm not sure they've been very successful at it. It looks like some hippies made it and they've tried to repurpose some bias binding and not done a very good job so yeah so that's my thinking for that top I've also got this one it's inside out at the moment because I was looking at the construction but uh, I really like this top it does fit it's a slightly bit tight but I thought that I would make it again um, but in the same 
boxy style as that one and I didn't think I would do any of this I thought I would just try and do it out of one piece of fabric make it big enough to fit and uh, maybe follow the shape of the skirt because the shape kind of goes like that like a curved shape so I think I'll try and follow that shape but make it big enough to fit me it's got a long v-neck with uh, buttons on it there's buttons on the inside there you go again this has pockets now I think everything as a woman I think everything should have pockets and I think it should have deep pockets and this hasn't really got deep pockets it should have pockets that are right down to the bottom so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to put a nice deep hand pocket in and then I can put secateurs in scissors in it's just general stuff when I'm working around the place tape measure if I'm doing fabric just yeah just general stuff so when I'm working it can act like an apron as well as a jacket so this one's got three quarter sleeves a bit like this dress and I like that style so I think the other one the red one I think I'm going to do that with three quarter length sleeves like this one with the V in for the elbow and uh, maybe pop a bit of elastic on that or maybe just leave it open I could even make it just into a dress without the sleeves and uh, just have it like a um, work dress so I think I might make two of these and do that so that's that and um, the other one I've got is this beautiful vintage utility dress it's still got the label in it it looks like it's from around the 1960s ish early 60s maybe um, David says it is my, my grandma's dress but I just really, really love the shape. I like the fact that it's got sort of capped sleeves on it in one piece of fabric. Um, it does have darts in it here. So obviously it's a two-piece construction. Um, it does have this lovely um, piping along the front edge. Even the buttons scream 1970s. Sorry about the light today, it's because it's raining. But uh, again, it's got the trusty pocket. But I just love it. I love the shape. I love how it fits. I love the style. Um, I'm not a keen on the fabric, but I just think if I could clone it and make it in some nice modern fabric, then it would be a really nice dress to wear around here. So yeah, that's a knee length one. The others are shorter, but I'm thinking of making them knee length as well, um, or longer length to wear with skirts or something. So I can where over layer things. So that's my thinking for that one. Now, I've been rummaging through some fabric. A young girl, locally, talks about on here before. She gave me a load of fabric. And uh, this is some of the fabric that she gave me. There's still a load upstairs. There's some Harris Tweed upstairs. And that's what this is. This is Harris Tweed Hunter Green. So I'm thinking of making a waistcoat with this. It's absolutely beautiful because I've got a waistcoat on today and I like how it fits. So I'm going to make a fitted waistcoat, I think. I think that'll be really nice. It's only narrow. But it is a beautiful colour. There you go. I think it's about three quarters of a metre wide. And then full dress size width. So that's that. I think it's 60 inches wide and about three quarters of a metre um, in length. And then the other one I've got is this blue one. Now, I think it's of heavy duty linen. And it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And I fancy a dress in this because it's nice and lightweight but thick at the same time. So I think it'll be great for the winter. So I'm going to make a dress with that. I've got enough for two dresses in that so I can make a couple of things. There's about three metres of fabric there. She gave me this. Which is a linen again. And because it's cream, I'm thinking, do you know, I might have a go of dyeing it with some natural dyes. I've got some logwood there. And I think that would be really nice. I've also got some alkanet. So I'm thinking if I cut it in half, I could do one in a dye bath of logwood and one in a dye bath of alkanet. And that would be lovely because logwood's orange and alkanet is, uh, I think that's a purple or a blue. Can't remember. But either purple or blue would be lovely in this. And then again, make it into a dress. 
because there's enough for two, enough for two dresses. There's two meters in that, so I get two knee length um, dresses, and then I've got this. And this is what I'm thinking of making that red top and that blue top out of. Again, it's linen, it's a nice heavyweight linen, um, more like suitors li suiting linen, but it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And there's about three meters of each, so one's a dark grey and one's in this nice light grey. Now I think these would be lovely as well um, made into a dress. My, my style dress like a dungaree top style dress um, and yeah I just think this would be really nice. So I think I'm going to make two tops, the tops that I've just shown you, the blue and the red and uh, two dresses out of this because I'm itching to make some clothes I don't like the fashion in the shops I bought some stuff off that Shein company yes it's nice but it's polyester and uh, me at my age me and polyester just don't get on so there are my thoughts for that I've also been around the second hand shop and got a load of patterns those patterns about 15 patterns 50p so I like I like to make that. I think that's really pretty. I remember these patterns from when I worked in the fabric shop, which sold wool. Um, I'm just loving this style at the moment. This waistcoat type thing. I just think it's really nice. So I love my eighties stuff as well. I'm an eighties girl. I was a teenager in the eighties. So yeah, these may be a bit short. But I like the style, and I love that. I think that's lovely. Nice, uh, what you might call it, tank top. So I fancy doing that in some natural dyes out of the natural dyes that I've got. I think that would be really nice. So uh, yeah, oh, that's really nice as well. One of these for the winter. Maybe not in that mohair, but uh, yeah, very really pretty. Yeah, it's a wet day. It's tottering by gently, they're getting very wet. Can you see Gabriel Oak in the distance? Got a lovely flower on it and got so pleased I planted it there because I can see it. There we go, there's Gabriel Oak. Looking very pretty, shame it's raining. But uh, I'm so pleased I planted it there because I'll be forever reminded of my mum and dad Buy me that for me 50th. Lovely. There's Roald Dahl. Just this side of the wall. And then the other side of the wall is Gertrude Jekyll. And then under the window, just there at the side of that bush with the berries on the Cotone Aster, is my wallet and old haul off my brother for my 50th. And uh, below the window here, I've got Scepter de Isle. So I've got a good selection of roses I can look at when it's raining. And as they grow and get taller, I'll uh, be able to see them from the window. But doesn't the border look pretty from the house? Very pretty. We finally got a break in the weather. And the sheep are back. Don't see the sheep much. But uh, I'm not sure if he's fattening these up. Yeah, it's a mixture of uh, old ewes and new lambs, I think. But have you seen my border? Because I want to try to show you in the rain before. I only did this um, early in the summer. Probably about April time. But I didn't really plant it up until the summer started. Because I didn't really know what to do with it. Because that one, I kind of lost the plot with that one. But this one has done really, really well. This is the one with that little pound shop rose in. And look at that blue. It seems to be getting bluer and bluer as it ages the flower. I didn't know it was such a pretty plant, you know. Gordon always used to make a big fuss about this plant. I can see why now. If you think I'll have to do some cuttings, definitely. But it has these lovely blue flower sprigs. I'm definitely going to try and do some cuttings. I'm sorry about the noise, but I haven't been able to get up to the chickens yet because of the rain. But uh, it stops now. I think the wasps have gone from down there, the hornets, where those sheep are. But I think they've gone now. 
So once it all starts dying back below the wall there, I'm going to start fixing that up. Feeling very autumn and a bit cold in that wind. So, right, I'm going to go and sort the chicken, stop them making that noise, because it's annoying. I'm going to get on with some of the jobs. So see you in a bit. Everybody's happy now. Having a nice drink of water. Right, I need to think about putting the perspex back on here now. There's a piece there still. But I put perspex all the way along here. And now the weather's changed. I think I'll do that later today. Um, if the rain stops. I also need to secure the roof up there. There's a loose bit of roof um, before the winds come. Just here, this piece, this piece needs to cure in. So I need to do that. It's stoke proof, rat proof, as far as I know anyway. Nothing can get in. Um, I also need to fix the leak on my roof up there. But I need it to stop raining for that. There's the sheep again. Right. See my berries? Well, the bushes berries. Isn't it pretty? This will be stripped in the next few weeks. The blackbirds will have the lot. Which I don't mind, because I'm not going to eat them myself. But, uh, my maple tree is starting to turn and go a bit yellow. That'll be bright yellow in the next couple of weeks goes a lovely acid yellow colour. So, right, I've got another job to do in the house and then I'm going out. The golden rod is finished now. Um, we got that just the right time last week to be able to dye our wool. So the rudbeckias are looking really really pretty brightening up things on a very dull dark day and it's cold. But uh, the Echinopsis is looking lovely this morning. And this phlox is just flowering its socks off. I think it's a phlox. It's either a phlox or a stock. It's very pretty. But uh, everything else is finishing off now. These daisies have just started to flower. I got this off an elderly customer who's now died. Um, it's very pretty. It's very gypsophilia like. And if it was dry, it would look lovely in um, a flower arrangement if it wasn't wet with the rain. So uh, it's going to have hundreds of those little daisy flowers on that. And it's a very similar daisy to what you get in the lawn, but it's really tall. It grows about four or five foot tall. So that's really pretty. Tansies are nearly finished. I need to pick the flowers before they finish. Um, I might pick some of the Rudbeckia and try drying, dyeing with them again. Because um, I've got quite a few flowers, so I'm sure that the bush will appreciate it. And summer gone is looking very purple this morning. Right, so I've sat in front of the fire and I've decided to do some spinning. It's too cold to do anything else, all I want to do is just sit in front of the fire. So I'm spinning some Welsh Mountain from a um, local farmer. I got it a few years ago and uh, it sat in a box, it's been washed. Went away to somebody and got a nice bath somewhere in North Wales and uh, I went and picked it up. I'm thinking of making myself a jumper, just a no-frills jumper. Uh, just plain knit and pearl stitches. But it's one that my woolen mitten recommended on her channel. 
and I've been meaning to knit it for ages. So I'm feeling a bit rusty because I've not done much spinning for a while. But uh, I like the process of taking it from the sheep in the field to washing it, to preparing it, to spinning it and then to making something with it, whether it's a rug or a cardigan, hand knit or a felted item for somebody. Um, my mother-in-law gets a lot of my experiments and she seems to like them. She got a woven experiment off me for Christmas last year. So I've actually run out of fibre now. So I've not worked out my measurements very well. Oh, hang on. There's a bit more here. But uh, I'm nearly up to plying it, which is when you spin the two pieces of yarn together in the opposite direction. And that then gives you your yarn. It's lovely wool. Whether you can see that. It still has little bits in it. Little bits of hay and grass and but I like that because it tells a story it tells a story of where the sheep's been the land that they've grazed whether they've been on bracken or gorse or whether they've just been in grass whether they've been with grass seeds in a hay field um, yeah I just like the fact that it tells a story and then I get to wear that story and quite funny really because sometimes I've looked at a fleece in the field and I've thought oh I'd love to spin that into a jumper and then I go to the, I've been to the farmer and I've said oh can I have that fleece when it comes off the sheep and quite often they just give it you you don't even have to pay them but uh, yeah I just love the process, it's very satisfying, very therapeutic and then I get to wear some lovely wool garments. My husband doesn't particularly like wool, he said it makes his head itchy. So I've got to modify a hat that I made him last year and put a bit of a fleece band on it so it doesn't itch his head. But. Uh, yeah, my mum gets a lot of my hand knits. So yeah, it's a nice gift to give to people. I gave a gift to a lady a few years ago. Sadly, she died a few months later. Um, during the COVID pandemic. So she didn't get that long to enjoy it. But she did say it gave her relief from arthritis on her neck. And she used to sleep with it on the pillow. So that's what I love about wool, because it's therapeutic properties and the smell. I love the smell of the lanolin, but before the fleece has been washed. I don't wash the lanolin out because that is the uh, waterproofing properties of the fleece. And that makes the garment waterproof. I don't understand people that wash it out. I mean... There's no great purpose in washing it out because the fats in the wool are what make it waterproof as I say. So many years ago, hundreds of years ago when the clansmen used to take the uh, sheep off on the drovers roads they'd just wear tweed. They wouldn't wear raincoats or umbrellas or they're a modern invention but what they used to use was tweed and it would still have the lanolin in it so it would keep them dry keep them warm and yes it would have been about four meters long the piece of fabric it would have been a skirt it would have been a coat but it was waterproof and they were able to walk miles tens of miles sometimes up to a hundred miles just to take their sheep to or cattle to market and these big pieces of tartan keep them warm and keep them dry so I'm a great advocate that if you do use raw wool 
leave the lanolin in. It's nice and soft on your hands when you spin it. Um, I actually think it makes the wool softer rather than coarser. I do use hair conditioner when I wash it and that makes it soft again. But uh, I think you strip out the structure of the wool when you take out the lanolin. I think the only time you ever need to do that is if you actually want the lanolin to make into cream. Hand cream. Shall I turn you and let you see what I'm doing? Right, so here's my hands. I have my hands a decent way back from the bobbin. Zoom you out a bit. See the fire there now. And all you're doing is, you're holding on to the yarn here. You're putting twist in the yarn. Then it takes it up and pops it on the bobbin. Now, I always spin my wool anti-clockwise. For some reason it's just more comfortable to me because I'm right-handed. And then when I ply the two threads together or three threads together, I do it clockwise. So all I'm doing is pressing the treadle on the wheel, letting some spin come up into this bit here, and then releasing it and letting it into the yarn. And all you're doing is you're letting the twist go from here down into the yarn. But you can control how much twist you have by how fast your feet go, by how many times you press the pedal before you let the twist into the wool. And that's it. And that's what you get when you get this wool here. And then when you ply the two pieces together, that's your yarn. And that's it. That's all spinning is. It's really easy. It's just practice. It's a bit like playing the drums. Your feet are doing something different to your hands. And then the wheel's doing something else. So, it's all you do is you're just pinching the twist and then letting it in. Pulling the yarn out of this bit here. You don't hold on to it tight, you hold on to it loose. And then... Give your bobbin a flick and let the twist go down, stretching out the fibres. You don't want too many fibres if you want to spin thin like I want to, because I want a four ply for a vintage jumper weight. And that's that, that's all you do. And then once your bobbin's full, you then take it off, you use an empty bobbin. You'll use an empty bobbin and then you apply the two things together in the other direction to what you've just spun in. And that basically is a whistle stop tour to spinning your own yarn. It's really easy. I can use it on my knitting machine, on the circular machine that my mother-in-law's just given me. I've got the 48 needle and I've got the 22 needle. And I can make scarves, hats, jumpers, gloves, um, toppers for the top of my wellies. I can make anything I want, basically. I can make rugs. But once I learnt to spin, it just opened up a whole new world. And I feel, sat in my old cottage, like I'm doing something my ancestors would have done. My family originally on my father's side is from um, Wales through his mother. His father's side are from Ireland. And somewhere way back when, they were in Scotland. So I think at some point somewhere down the line, they would have spun wool. So I feel that connection with people gone by. The virtuous woman in the Bible's got a lot to answer for, really, because when I first read that story, it said that she sought out wool and flax, and she wove with it and made tapestry for clothes, which was like linen cloth, thick cloth. She made sashes for the merchants. And she was productive, and I thought, I want to learn to be like her. And that's how it all started, spinning, weaving, knitting, 
Just being productive with my hands. Growing food, looking after my house, making what I can instead of buying all the time. Especially these days with things being so expensive. But, uh, yeah. Just thought you might like to see what I'm up to with my spinning wheel. I'm having a bit of a quiet afternoon. Because I'm not feeling my best today. I'm feeling a little bit fluey. Probably just something passing. Didn't have a good night last night. So, no run, no walk. I've done some pottering this morning. And now I'm spinning in front of me flying. The first time being lit this year, this season. So I'm just going to finish this. And then when I'm up to the ply, I'll show you how I ply it together. And then show you the finished wool. See you in a bit. Right, so I've filled my bobbins up with all the wool that I've got. I've got my new bobbin on. And I've got my two bobbins with wool on. One's got slightly more than the other, I think. I think this one's got slightly more. But it's not a problem. I can easily make it work. So I'm just putting my bobbins on the side of my wheel. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the two threads together. I've got one. I've got two. And then this on here is what's called my leader. You thread it through the hooks, then you thread it through the hole, and pull it through. Now what this is going to do is it's going to take onto the bobbin first, and then I'm going to join my yarn onto the end, and then that's then going to give me time to get the twist in, in order to get it up to the other two pieces, if that makes sense. Attach that onto there. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to spin in the opposite direction to what I was just spinning a minute ago. Okay, so I'll just put my spring on and that's just going to tension the bobbin. Right, so I'm going to spin clockwise now. Before it was anti clockwise, now it's clockwise. So we're going that way. So you give it a good hit. Now you're letting all the twist in to this yarn first before you let it down into this bottom brown. Now what I like to do is I like to put my finger between the two to stop them getting tangled up. So we're going to start our bobbin and let the twist in. Now my knot's a bit big so I have to feed it on before it goes and starts spinning. So let's try again. You don't have to do it this way, but this is just the way I choose to do it. And this is a lot quicker. So all you're doing is just twisting the two things together. You're not actually spinning the wool. You're just spinning the two pieces together. Let's see if I can zoom in for you. And you can see what my hands are doing. See, I've got my finger between the two pieces of yarn. And then I'm letting it in, feeding it into the wheel. Letting it back so I can let the twist down the yarn. Twist is coming back. Remember to pinch it so that it doesn't come down the yarn too quick. And that's it. That is all you do to ply till you've finished your, your bobbins. Very therapeutic. Very relaxing. And that's how I spin my wool. So I hope you've enjoyed that. It's been a different vlog today because... I've not been doing much today, to be honest with you. I've not been feeling very well. 
been feeling a bit fluey, a bit cold. I think it's just the change in the weather. I'm not coming down with anything, but it is just simply the fact that the weather's a bit colder and a bit damp. And I don't do very well in damp weather. So, a nice sit in front of a nice warm fire, spin some wool, do a bit of posturing like we've done this morning. And uh, I think that will be it for me for today. So, I'll see you tomorrow. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Have a lovely evening. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. So bye for now.